Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making some wooden guitar picks. Well, I'm always trying to come up with ideas for the show and projects that I can make. And I'm always trying to think of ways to use up scrap um, that would normally get burnt or just pitched. And truth be told, it was my wife that said one day, do you think that maybe you could make some wooden guitar picks? And I thought, yeah, you know what? I could give that a try. So today is an experiment in whether or not it can be done. So we're going to start off by heading over to the wood rack and trying to pull out some usable pieces of stock. Well, we're over here at the wood rack and what I'm looking for is scrap pieces of whatever. I don't care what the species is. I don't care if it's oak, walnut. I don't care if it's maple, poplar. This is an experiment, so I'd like to get as many species as I can. And I also want to play with thicknesses. So I want anything from 1 16th of an inch thick up to 1 8th of an inch thick. Um, <clears throat> I know that for my playing style, I like a more flexible pick, so I'll probably stick mostly to the 1 16th of an inch. But I've pretty much decided on the size that I'd like to use, and that would be squares of 2 inch by 2 inch. So we're going to start off by looking for anything that's usable in the 2 inch by 2 inch range. Well, I checked over in the rack and uh, I found a couple pieces of some scrap um, that I could use. I really wanted to do a walnut pick, but I don't have any pieces of walnut that are scrap enough that I'm willing to uh, cut them up for guitar picks. So we're stuck with maple and poplar. You want to think here on the grain orientation of these pieces of wood. And what I mean by that is you want from end to end, I'm just going to draw out a pretend guitar pick here. So this would be your business end up here where you're playing with and this is where you're holding. You want to make sure that the grain is running along this way. That will give the optimum strength for the guitar pick. You don't want to have the grain running this way and then as you're strumming you're snapping the end off because the end grain is weak. Don't forget here that it's only 1 16th of an inch thick. So the first thing that we want to do with these scraps is we want to cut off a couple strips here at 1 16th of an inch thick. And for that we're going to use the table saw. And before you think, oh my goodness, that's a dangerous maneuver, I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing you want to do is kill the power to your table saw and put in a ripping blade. If you're ripping stock along with the grain, that's what ripping is, then use a ripping blade. If you're cross-cutting across the grain, use a cross-cut blade. These blades are engineered for these types of cuts. So don't, you know, put extra stress on your saw, your blade, your stock by using the incorrect blade. And for this, we will be ripping 1 16th inch strips off of our stock. So get the ripping blade installed, tighten it down, and then you can move on to the next step. The next thing that you want to do, and you should be doing this anyway before any table saw work, is you want to check to make sure that your blade is square to your table. Because after all, if your blade isn't square, then your rip as it goes through will not um, provide you with a consistent thickness. If the blade is off kilter, uh, tilt it too much to the left, let's say, it will give you a strip that is thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom. So you want to make sure that your blade is 100% square to your table. Now whether you use a digital uh, unit like this or whether you decide that you'd like to use a trusted square, 
both methods are absolutely fine um, as long as the results are the same. Well you've got your blade squared up to your table and it's still cranked right up in the height but that's okay because we've got some adjustments to make. So the next thing you want to do is check your stock for square. Make sure that this is square as well as your blade and you want to place a mark 1 16th of an inch in from the edge of the board. The next thing that you want to do is slide your fence over and place your stock against the fence and make sure the power's off here guys but rotate your blade in and I hope you can see this but we're gonna slide our fence over ever so slightly bit by bit until our mark at 1 16th of an inch lines up with that tooth and right there is about it from there we're going to lock down our fence and hopefully you can see here that that line that we've drawn is going to strike so that there is one sixteenth of an inch now hanging on the outside of this blade. Now you might be thinking, holy crow, you got to mark it every time and set the fence every time? No, you don't have to do that because from there we're going to get ourselves our combination square and what you're going to do here is set the square edge here inside your miter slot tight against the wall of the slot and with your board tight against your fence and your fence locked down slide the rule of the combination square slide it up tight to your board so that it touches the edge of it and once it's once it's touching the edge tighten up your combination square and what's going to happen is you're going to rip this one piece of board and then when you go to adjust your fence <clears throat> you'll just place your combination square against the edge of your slot and slide your fence over until your stock touches the rule of your combination square lock your fence down and take another pass that way each time you know you've got one sixteenth of an inch material on the outside and at least with guitar picks I mean it's not that imperative I did say between one sixteenth and one eighth it's up to you what you choose so let's go ahead make a test pass with this and uh, we'll set the blade height for this stock and see exactly how close we got to one sixteenth And there's our piece of poplar and we'll just put the calipers on there and you can see that's 1 16th. That's pretty good. I usually don't get it on the first shot. I mean uh, I usually have to adjust it several times to get it at 1 16th. So now I'll show you like I said with the combination square how we can go ahead and set the fence again for a second pass. So here we have it. Um, we've just finished the cut as you saw. Here's our piece and you can see it's still set for cutting this block of wood but you just take your combination square like I said place it in your slot there's a little gap here which is 1 16th of an inch plus the thickness of the blade and just slide your your stock over and your fence until it touches on your rule once you've touched there, you can take this away and your fence is now set for the next cut for 1 16th of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple more of these, a couple out of the maple, a couple out of the poplar, and then once I'm done that, we're going to come back and we're going to carry on with this experiment. Well, you can see here we've got several pieces cut and um, you can also see why these are scrap pieces, I mean with the, the knots in it and some unusable areas. Maybe on an artistic piece, I mean that would give one heck of a lot of character to an artistic piece, but that we're not making artistic guitar picks. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to cut these into squares of two inches by two inches if the stock will allow. 
and uh, it looks like it might. I think I'm going to go one and three quarter by one and three quarter. The only reason I am giving so much leeway is to give me some room to work and on top of that uh, we need to safely cut these on the table saw. So you don't want to be cutting pieces as small as a guitar pick uh, and risk your digits. So now that we've got that little safety reminder out of the way, we're going to put in a cross cutting blade and cut these pieces down to one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And after a little bit of work at the table saw, we've got uh, a bunch of stacks of uh, guitar pick blanks. And I made a couple uh, of maple ones a little thicker um, just to try them out, but for the most part they're one sixteenth of an inch thick. Now these are going to be cut at the scroll saw, so we want to put them in stacks that will be of a usable height uh, for cutting. You don't want to be cutting them too thick. So these are just under half an inch thick, and what we're going to need now is some painter's tape. So with our painter's tape, we're going to take a stack of our blanks and line them up on all four sides so that they're even. And what we want to do here is place a piece of blue painter's tape across the top, wrap it around the side and around the back, just like that. Now, you want to make sure that on the front, you leave just a little bit there on the edge because we're going to need room to put our guitar pick pattern on here. And you also want to make sure that all of the grains align in the right orientation because we're going to end up stack cutting these on the scroll saw and you really want to make sure all the grain is aligned. So now that we've got that one piece on, we're going to trim it and then go ahead and tape up all four of the sides. Well, now that you have all of your little packages taped up like this, it's as simple as getting a regular guitar pick or a real guitar pick or a plastic guitar pick, because I guess our wooden ones are still going to be real, holding it there in the middle. And we're just going to go around and trace this guitar pick. Cheating? I don't know. Got to get that that shape from somewhere. If you have a favorite guitar pick, maybe your picks are bigger and you like this one. Uh, you like to use that one, but this happens to be one of my favorite picks and that's the style I want to make. And there it is on the front of this particular piece. So go ahead and uh, mark this pick on all of your little packages. Well here we have all of our stacks all taped together with our pattern traced out on the top and one of the keys to uh, successful stack cutting is to keep the stability of the stack for as long as possible that way you're completely avoiding um, any shifting in each one of the little uh, st uh, pieces the, the slats or whatever you want to call them so, for that reason, 
We don't want to be cutting through this outside edge of tape because as soon as you cut through it, it instantly weakens the entire stack. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat each one of these as a scrolling interior cut and we're going to be drilling a blade entry hole in one of the corners uh, so that we can cut out these picks. And we can see the blade entry hole here. Um, none of these are a particularly difficult cut due to the fact that we haven't made the stacks too thick. So what I've done is I've put a number three reverse tooth blade in here and now with the blade through the entry hole we're just going to go ahead and carefully follow around the lines to cut out our picks. Now that you got them all cut, just go ahead and give them all a light sanding. there you have it. Wooden guitar picks. Uh, great little project. I had a blast making these. Will I make them again? Yeah, I'd say most definitely. Why not? I mean, great way to use up some scrap and, you know, kill a few minutes there in the afternoon. Set them off to the side. Every time you're waiting for a glue up, cut a few guitar picks. Guys, even if you're not a guitar player or a hack like me, or even if you don't know guitar players on your list, um, hopefully you'll take something else out of this video, whether it be how to set your fence to cut the thin strips that you require, or even if it's something as simple as doing stock cutting. There's something in this video for everybody, and I hope that somewhere in the time that you've spent with me today, you found something in this video for you. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.